The Patient with a Substance-Related Disorder Introduction When an individual consumes a substance such as drugs or alcohol, their brain produces large amounts of dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter which triggers the brain's reward system. After repeated drug or alcohol use, the brain is unable to produce normal amounts of dopamine on its own, resulting in the individual to increase their usage of the substance leading to an addiction. Patients who develop a drug or alcohol dependence may premedicate themselves when a stressful situation such as a dental appointment is anticipated. Therefore, direct questions and observation of symptoms at each appointment are required to determine if a patient is cognitively impaired to prevent complications. There is no classic cultural, socioeconomic, or educational profile for one who has a substance abuse disorder. A patient's medical and dental history does not always provide the information necessary to determine whether the patient uses substances at all or the level of dependency. It is a professional responsibility of the dental hygienist to view substance dependency as an illness and to be aware of the characteristics that suggest a possible condition. Address the issue of an appropriate dental hygiene care plan for the patient who has become dependent on a substance. Alcohol consumption. The clinical pattern of alcohol use. Abstinence and low risk use. For women, low risk drinking is defined as no more than three drinks on any single day and no more than seven drinks per week. For men, it is defined as no more than four drinks on any single day and no more than 14 drinks per week. Moderate alcohol use is defined as up to one drink a day for women and two drinks per day for men. The individual can function appropriately in work, family, and social situations. Unhealthy alcohol use increases an individual's risk for neuropsychiatric conditions, gastrointestinal diseases, cancers including oropharyngeal, intestinal, intentional injuries such as suicide, unintentional injuries, and cardiovascular disease. Binge drinking occurs when an individually excessively drinks in a short period, typically four drinks for women and five drinks for men in about two hour period, increasing blood alcohol concentration levels to 0.08. Heavy alcohol use increases a patient's risk for infectious disease such as pneumonia or tuberculosis as the immune system becomes more compromised. The Substance Abuse and Mental Health Service Administration defines heavy alcohol use as binge drinking on five or more days in the past month. Alcohol use disorder, also known as alcoholism, is a pattern of alcohol use in which one has difficulty controlling his or her drinking, being preoccupied with alcohol, continuing to use alcohol even when it causes problems, having to drink more to get the same effect, or having withdrawal symptoms when blood alcohol levels decrease or if one ceases to drink. The effects of alcohol intoxication. The following are effects of alcohol intoxication. Behavioral changes, aggressiveness, mood instability, impaired judgment, impaired social and occupational functioning, impaired attention and memory, stupor or coma. Physical characteristics, slurred speech, lack of coordination, unsteady gait, and nystagmus. Complications, irresponsible actions in work and family settings. Accidents with resultant bruises, fractures, or brain trauma vehicular accidents, or suicide. Consequences of underage drinking, binge drinking, drinking and driving, suicide, sexual assault, high risk sex, alcohol induced mental impairment. Signs of an AUD. AUD is also known as alcoholism or alcohol dependence. It is a disease which includes four main symptoms, craving, a strong need or compulsion to drink, loss of control, the inability to limit one's drinking to a safe level despite the negative impact it may have on one's responsibility to work, school, or family relationships. Physical dependence, withdrawal symptoms such as nausea, sweating, shaking, and anxiousness when alcohol use is stopped after a period of heavy drinking. Tolerance, the need to drink greater amounts of alcohol to reach a level of desired intoxication. Other signs include amnesia and binge drinking. The etiology, genetics. Although there is no single gene directly linked to alcoholism, a combination of genes related to alcoholism and mental illness can increase the risk of developing alcoholism by 20%. Biopsychosocial. 
Alcohol-specific parenting is a distinct and influential predator of adolescent alcohol use partially shaped by parents' own drinking experiences. Children and alcohol-dependent parents are two to six times more likely than the general population to develop AUDs. Additionally, Children raised by alcohol-dependent parents are exposed to a higher level of multiple risk factors in leading to alcohol-related problems, mental and behavioral disorders in adverse family environments, decreased sensitivity to intoxication effects of alcohol. Environmental, psychological stress, family peers, and social forces, current lifestyle, culture, advertisements, and economics. Motivational factors, both emotional, stress reduction, mood enhancement, social rewards, and cognitive, conscious, and unconscious beliefs about alcohol may play a role in an individual's decision to drink. Metabolism of alcohol, ingestion, and absorption. Upon intake, alcohol is absorbed promptly from the stomach and small intestine into the bloodstream. It is transported to the liver for metabolism. Liver metabolism. More than 90% of ingested alcohol is converted into acetaldehyde, then acetone, and finally into carbon dioxide and water by the action of various liver enzymes. High acetaldehyde levels and chronic alcohol consumption impair liver function and can lead to liver damage. Diffusion. Within five minutes after ingestion, alcohol can be detected in the blood. Alcohol is quickly diffused into all cells and intercellular fluid of the body. Less than 10% is excreted directly through the lungs, skin, and kidney, breath, sweat, urine. A person's alcohol level can be determined by several tests of the blood, urine, saliva, or water vapor in the breath. Blood alcohol level, BAC. Alcohol impaired driving accounted for 31% of the traffic-related fatalities in 2014 in the United States. Drivers are considered alcohol impaired when their BACs are 0.08 or higher. BAC measurement reflects a person's drinking rate and rate of metabolism. Alcohol is metabolized more slowly than it is absorbed. The BAC increases when alcohol is consumed faster than previous drinks are metabolized. The rate at which the body will absorb and metabolize alcohol is based on factors such as age, gender, percentage of fatty tissue in the body, and whether food is also being metabolized. Health hazards of alcohol. Prolonged alcohol can prolonged alcohol use can cause many serious medical disorders. Alcohol consumption has been identified as a cause for more than 200 diseases, health conditions, or injuries that can affect various organs or body systems. A few are mentioned here. Brain. Alcohol interferes with the brain's communication pathways, slowing down the transfer of neurotransmitters. These neurotransmitter disruptions can change mood and behavior and make it harder for a person to think clearly or move with adequate coordination. The heart. Drinking excessively for a long period will lead damage to the heart, such as cardiomyopathy, arrhythmia, stroke, and high blood pressure. Liver disease. Chronic alcohol abuse is the most frequent cause of morbidity and mortality from liver diseases. Alcoholic liver disease, ALD, includes the following conditions. Fatty liver and degeneration early stages are reversible with abstinence. Alcohol hepatitis, inflammation of the liver. Early fibrosis, healthy cells replaced by scar tissue. Cirrhosis, scarring of the liver with irreversible damage. Individuals with hepatitis C virus are more susceptible to ALD. Digestive system. Alcohol ingestion alter the stomach mucosa, stimulates gastric and secrete acid secretions and affects gastric function. Desquamation of the stomach lining may result in bleeding lesions. Alcohol causes the pancreas to produce toxic substances that can eventually lead to pancreatitis. Injury to small intestines, diarrhea, weight loss, and vitamin deficiencies. Nutritional deficiencies. Alcohol provides an excess of caloric intake. With the intake of large quantities of alcohol, the individual loses interest in nutritious foods, which can lead to many deficiencies. Deficiencies result from malabsorption of vitamins and essential nutrients. Secondary malnutrition develops from direct effects of alcohol on the gastrointestinal tract. Malabsorption and maldigestion occur after cellular damage in the intestinal wall. Cancer risk. Excessive alcohol use can increase the risk of developing certain cancers, including cancers of oral cavity, esophagus, pharynx, liver, and breast. Immunity and infection. 
Those who abuse alcohol have a diminished immune response, suppression of immune system defense, and disturbed function of neutrophils. Risk of many bacterial infections is increased, particularly pulmonary diseases, pneumonia, and TB, and viral infections, hepatitis B and C. Nervous system, central and peripheral. Early changes affect intellectual actions, judgment, and learning ability. Long-term alcohol abuse combined with malnutrition can lead to damage of both central and peripheral nervous system. Prolonged and heavy alcohol consumption leads to chronic brain damage. Wernicke Korsakoff's syndrome. This syndrome is a brain disorder of the cerebellum resulting in a vitamin B1 thiamine deficiency associated with chronic alcohol consumption. Two syndromes are involved as follow. Wernicke encephalopathy causes brain damage in lower parts of the brain, the thalamus and the hypothalamus, leading to symptoms of mental confusion, ocular dysfunction, and gait disturbances. Kors of psychosis results in permanent brain damage, resulting in permanent and persistent knowledge and memory problems, characterized by forgetfulness, easy frustration, lack of muscle coordination, and amnesia. The reproductive system. Alcohol affects every branch of the endocrine system directly and indirectly through the body's organization of the endocrine hormone. Female, increased risk for menstrual disturbances, infertility and miscarriage, stillbirth and premature delivery. <clears throat> Male, diminished testicular function and male hormone production, resulting in increased risk for imp impotence, infertility, and reduction of secondary sex characteristics. Fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, FASDS. FASDS are a group of condition that can occur in an individual whose mother drank alcohol during pregnancy. These conditions include issues with the individual's cognitive, physical, or behavioral abilities. Alcohol use during pregnancy. There is no known safe amount of alcohol use during pregnancy. There is no known safe form of alcohol during pregnancy. All the forms of alcohol are, are harmful. Complete abstinence during pregnancy is safest to prevent FASD. Prenatal alcohol exposure is cited as the leading preventable cause of birth defects and intellectual disabilities. Why alcohol is dangerous during pregnancy. Alcohol passes freely across the placenta. Increased incidence of spontaneous abortions and stillbirths associated with alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption any time during pregnancy can inhibit the fetus to grow properly, low birth weight, and negatively affect proper development of the brain or central nervous system. Consumption during the first three months of pregnancy can cause the infant to have facial dysmorphology. An infant born with FAD will have to overcome several impairments such as physical, social, psychological, and intellectual disabilities. Other factors. Other poor health habits often accompany the use of alcohol, including inadequate diet and use of tobacco. The use of prescription or illicit drugs with alcohol can increase the risk of adverse outcomes. Alcohol withdrawal syndrome. Withdrawal syndrome consists of disturbances that occur after abrupt cessation of alcohol intake in the alcohol-dependent person. Withdrawal signs appear within a few hours after drinking has stopped. Even a relatively small decline in blood concentration can precipitate the syndrome. Predisposing factors, malnutrition, fatigue, depression, physical illnesses aggravate withdrawal symptoms. Signs and symptoms, tremors of the hands, tongue, and eyelids, nervousness and irritation, anxiety, malaise, weakness, headache, dry mouth, autonomic hyperactivity, sweating, rapid pulse rate, and elevated blood pressure, transient visual, tactile, and auditory hallucinations, insomnia, grand mal seizures, nausea, or vomiting. Complications. Alcohol hallucinosis. Auditory and visual hallucinations can develop within 48 hours after the abrupt stop or reduction of heavy alcohol intake of long-standing dependency. Symptoms may last weeks or months. Impairment is severe with schizophrenic symptoms, although schizophrenia is not a predisposing factor. Delirium is not present. Alcohol withdrawal delirium or delirium tremens. Alcohol withdrawal delirium tremens symptoms include a more severe reaction to a reduction in blood alcohol level. May occur within one week of cessation of heavy alcohol intake. Features marked autotomic hyperactivity, rapid heartbeat, hypertension, fever, and sweating. Vivid hallucinations visual, auditory, and tactile, delusions and agitated behavior, tremor, confusion and disorientation. Treatment for AUD, types of treatment, 
There are different types of treatment for AUD, behavioral treatment, individual therapy to help the patient develop skills to stop drinking as well as coping skills to avoid relapse, marital and family counseling to help the patient build a strong social support system, medications, naltrexone, pill form taken once a day to reduce cravings for alcohol. Naltrexone is an opiate, opiate antagonist which interferes with the neurotransmitter system. Therefore, if a patient drinks alcohol while on naltrexone, euphoria will not result. Acamaproset Camprol is a pill taken three times a day to alleviate negative symptoms of the prolonged absence such as insomnia, anxiety, and restlessness. Indisulfiram Anabuse is a pill taken daily with the, with, that will cause nausea and vomiting, flushing, and heart palpitations if taken with alcohol. Disulfiram is used to, as a deterrent uh, to alcohol consumption. Mutual support groups, Alcoholics Anonymous, and other 12-step programs provide peer support for individuals who are trying to quit drinking or have quit and are trying not to relapse. Treatment settings. There are different treatment settings, inpatient, outpatient. Patients with AUD should start with their primary physician for overall health assessment and assistance in determining the appropriate treatment options and resources. Abuse of prescription and street drugs. With the legislation of medical and recreational marijuana in the many states and the opioid crisis occurring in many regions in our nation, every dental hygienist in, in the current practice will encounter a patient with a chemical dependence issue and should be available to provide care in a safe manner for the patient. Risk management for prescription drugs of abuse. A major problem facing healthcare is the division of prescription medication with a high potential for abuse. Substances are classified in the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration drug schedule according to an abuse potential. Prevention of opioid addiction in the dental office. All members of the dental team should take responsibility to prevent opioid addiction. Dentists should regular with, register with and utilize prescription drug monitoring programs to promote the appropriate use of controlled substances. Prescription pads are not recommended for use to avoid alterations and abuse. Dentists should consider non-steroidal anti-inflammatory analgesics as the first-line therapy for acute pain management. Patients should be educated regarding the responsibilities for, pre for preventing misuse, abuse, storage, and disposal of prescription opioids. All members of the dental team should seek continuing education in addictive disease and pain management. Most common drugs of abuse. The most common drugs of abuse are alcohol and those found in the categories in this section. Examples of the substances, names in the categories, and the commercial and, and street names are going to be discussed here now. Cannabinoids, marijuana. Despite cannabis use being illegal at the federal government level, as of January 2018, 30 states and District of Columbia have legalized marijuana for either medical or recreational use. The three basic types of cannabis used for recreational or medicinal purposes are called marijuana, weed, hash, or hash oil. All three types contain more than 85 cannabinoids found within the plant, with THC and CB, CBD being the two best known cannabinoids. THC is the primary psychoactive compound of the plant, which can make a person feel paranoid or anxious. CBD is non-psychoactive, so patients do not feel high. Using cannabis with this strain rather than rather gain the medicinal and therapeutic benefits of cannabis can offer met for medical relief. Medical marijuana use. Patients use medical marijuana as an alternative to manage pain, anxiety, depression, migraine, headaches, and sleep problems. Synthetic oral THC medications such as sesame and Marinol can be prescribed to reduce nausea and vomiting as symptoms related to chemotherapy treatment or AIDS-related conditions. Nabixamol oral mucosal sprays, Sativex, containing THC can help reduce pain and muscle spasticity in patients suffering from multiple sclerosis, spinal cord injuries, fibromyalgia, and rheumatoid arthritis. Children and adolescents with drug-resistant epilepsy have experienced a decrease in seizure occurrences with CBD added into their therapy. Different forms of marijuana, inhaled, cigarette forms called joints, cigars hallowed out and filled with cannabis called blunts. Can use a hookah pipe or bong, which filters the smoke through water. Vaping, a fine mist is inhaled instead of smoking the cannabis to reduce a person's exposure to carcinogens. Dabbing, uses hash oil, most potent type in a wax form. 
Oral. Edibles are when marijuana is added to foods or beverages. Edibles take longer for the person to feel the effect up to two hours because it must be digested and metabolized. Edibles can present a dosing challenge for some users, and the intensity of edibles is much greater, causing full-body psychoactive effects which much with much longer-lasting duration times of several hours. Many edibles, edible users prefer consumption before bedtime to aid with sleeping and wake up not feeling high but pain-free. Pill or capsule forms of marijuana. Oral uh, liquid cannabis or oral mucosa sprays. Topical. There are forms of cannabis de delivered delivery that can provide medicinal benefits without cerebral stimulation. Examples are topical creams or oils for localized pain relief and reduction of inflammatory inflammation to the area. Alternative. For more general body distribution with non-psychoactive effects, there are cannabis suppositories that can be inserted vaginally like a tampon. This provides an alternative for those who cannot tolerate the edibles or for patients who do not want to ex be exposed to the carcinogens of smoking, vaping, or dabbing. Rectal cannabis suppositories take only 10 to 15 minutes to take use. Directing the cannabinoids into the bloodstream, bypassing metabolism in the liver, and allowing the therapeutic effects to last 48 hours without impairing the user's cognition. Individuals who utilize the inhalation forms of marijuana, similar to tobacco use, are associated with an increased risk of cancer, lung damage, and oral health disease, such as oral cancers, periodontitis, and dental caries. Depressants. A drug that suppresses the central nervous system to calm and sedate the patient. Depressants are taken to relieve anxiety, promote sleep, and manage seizure activity. Examples are downers, sleeping pills, lewds, roofies, and alcohol. Dissociative anesthetics. A form of general anesthesia that promotes disassociation from the environment but does not necessarily complete unconsciousness, sometimes used for short diagnostic or surgical procedures. Drugs says, such as synthetic cannabinoids, synthetic cathinoids, ketamines, piperanzines, and some plant-based drugs such as cat and kratom are examples of new psychoactive substances, NPS. In the past decades, Ketamine has gained popularity as a club drug due to its euphoric qualities. Street names, Angel Dust and Special K. Hallucinogens. Chemical substances that produce mind-altering or mental perception-altering properties. These drugs act on the central nervous system leading to the user seeing and hearing phenomena that do not exist. A disorder associated with these substances can produce hallucinogen persisting perception disorder commonly known as flashbacks. This is uh, known as MDMA or ecstasy or molly, a popular drug among teens and young adults widely used at nightclubs and bars. It's also used as a club drug. Molly, which is slang for molecular, refers to the pure crystalline powder from ecstasy. MB MDMA is a classified as a stimulant but is known for its hallucinogenic effects. Examples are LSD, pe peyote, dimethyl atomine and magic mushrooms, opioids and morphine derivatives. Narcotic substances made from the Asian poppy and produced as synthetic drugs with the effects of opium, they result in analgesic and euphoric effects. Opioids are one of the most commonly prescribed in analgesics, anesthetics, antidiarrheal agents, and cough suppressants. Heroin is one of the most commonly abused drugs of this class. It can be injected, smoked, or snorted. Heroin use changes the function of the brain, increasing dependence of the drug. Other opioid drugs include morphine, Vicodin, Percodin, and Percocet. Although these opioids are prescribed legally for medical use to treat pain, the medications can lead to addiction resulting in similar harmful consequences as illegal heroin use. Vicodin, or hydrocodone, is a Schedule III drug and its potency is between codeine and oxycodone. It is an analgesic and pain reliever and has a high risk for addiction and dependence. Oxycontin, oxycodone, is a Schedule II drug, a narcotic pain, pain reliever to treat moderate to severe pain, has a high risk for addiction and dependence with use. Percodin, oxycodone and aspirin, is a Schedule II drug and a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, narcotic and analgesic used to treat moderate to severe pain. High risk for addiction and dependence exists with this use. Percocet, oxycodone, and acetaminophen is a Schedule II drug and a pain reliever to treat moderate and moderately severe pain. High risk for addiction and dependence exists with this use. 
fentanyl is an opioid that is 80 times more potent than the morphine and 50 times more potent than heroin. Intravenous fentanyl can be used as an anesthetic and analgesic for surgical procedures. Diragesic is a fentanyl transdermal patch used to manage chronic pain by slowly releasing fentanyl through the skin into the bloodstream over 48 to 72 hours. Actic, it dissolves quickly and absorbs through the sublingual mucosa to provide rapid analgesia. This is especially beneficial for patients undergoing cancer treatment to treat pain that has a rapid onset with intensity. Street produced fentanyl, which is produced in China and trafficked through Mexico, has generated the opioid and heroin crisis in many American cities, which has led to fatalities. Fentanyl users do not fit the typical illicit drug user characteristics since many became addicted from a surgical procedure or to treat chronic pain conditions and become addicted to opioids as a result. Naloxin or Narcan is a nasal spray that blocks the effects of opioids in overdose situations. Many first responders carry Narcan, especially in cities where opioid overdosing is prevalent. Individuals or families with a family member battling an opioid addiction are encouraged to carry Narcan to, encount, to counter an opioid overdose situation in many dental offices and clinics included in the emergency kit. Moving on to stimulants, a class of drugs that enhance brain activity. Stimulants causes an increase in mental alertness, attention, and energy. They improve motor skills and elicit a general sense of well-being. They increase cardiac respiratory function and speed up the metabolism. Stimulants include drugs such as cocaine, crack cocaine, amphetamine, and methamphetamine. Cocaine hydrochloride power can be snorted through the nostrils, or when mixed with water, it can be injected intravenously. Crack cocaine is cocaine alkaloid in the form of small crack. Crack is cocaine that has been processed from cocaine hydrochloride to free base for smoking. It is easily vaporized and inhaled and exhibits an extremely rapid onset of effects. Amphetamines are prescription medications used to treat attention deficit, hyperactivity disorder, and narcolepsy. They increase alertness, focus, and energy. Common prescription stimulants are Dexedrine, Adderall, Ritalin, and Concerta. Slang terms for prescription stimulants include speed, uppers, and vitamin R. Methamphetamine, meth or speed, is taken orally, intranasally, snorting the powder by intravenous injection or by smoking. Meth users are resistant to local anesthesia. Ice, a very pure form of methamphetamine seen as a crystals under a high magnification. It produces an immediate and powerful stimulant when smoked. Other compounds, anabolic steroids used to build muscles for increased performance may produce a feeling of well-being or euphoria followed by lack of energy and irritability. Short-term effects may lead to mental problems such as paranoia, extreme irritability and illusions, impaired judgment, and violent outburst. Long-term effects include depression, kidney de decline or failure, liver damage, enlarged heart, hypertension, and elevated blood cholesterol levels, which increase the risk for stroke and heart attacks even in the user is of young age. Gender-specific effects in males can cause shrinking, testicles, decreased sperm count, baldness, development of breasts, and increased risk for prostate cancer. In females, steroids can cause growth of facial hair or excess body hair, male pattern baldness, changes in or stop in menstrual cycle, enlarged clitoris, and deepened voice. Age-specific effects in teenagers can result in stunted growth if steroids are used before the teen's growth spurt. One second. What do you want? Beta broke the window upstairs. She broke it. Okay, I'll be right up. No, right now. No, I know. I like, will... you need to see it. It's broken. Okay, the whole window fell out of the house? Yes. Okay, I'll be right up. Like, the plastic part where it can make that sound. She broke it. Okay, I'll be right up. Is it in her room or your room? Uh, the door, the back door. The back, okay, I will be there. You have to give me a minute. Let me finish this lesson, okay? Thank you. Kay. Shut the door. Thank you. All right, I'm sorry about that. Okay, In inhalants, a breathable chemical vapor that produces psychoactive effects capable of producing intoxication, abuse, and dependence. Inhalants can come in different forms, solvents, aerosols, sprays, gases, or nitrate. Available in a wide variety of commercial products, paint thinners, gasoline, glue, spray paint, computer cleaning, dusters, liquid aroma, leather cleaner, or balloons filled with nitrous oxide are just a few common household examples. Nitrous oxide used in medical and dental settings also present, present a risk for abuse. A substance soaked cloth 
called huffing or substance placed in paper and plastic bag called bagging is applied to the nose and mouth and vapors are inhaled. Intoxication is characterized by mild euphoria and change in the perception of time, causes relaxation of the smooth muscles and decreases in oxygen carrying capacity of the blood. Toxic reactions, vomiting, headache, hypotension, and dizziness. Emerging drugs, synthetic cathinones, bath salts. Bath salts contain two man-made stimulants, methadrone and methylone, which affect the brain such, as, such like MDMA or ecstasy. Bath salts are usually in the form of white or brown crystal-like powder, which can be swallowed, snorted, smoked, or injected. Synthetic cathinones are part of a group of drugs called MPS. Synthetic cathinone affects the brain similar to cocaine, but it is 10 times more powerful. Bath salts can produce such effects as paranoia, hallucinations, increased sex drive, panic attacks, or excited delirium. Bath salts are, <laughs> are marketed as an inexpensive alternative to methamphetamine or cocaine. Synthetic cathinones consumers can purchase products online and in drug paraphernalia stores under a variety of brand names, which include Bliss, Cloud9, Lunar Wave, Vanilla Sky, or White Lightning. Desomorphine, Crocodile. I think that's how you pronounce it. Crocodile. Crocodile. Desomorphine is a synthetic opioid first synthesized in the United States in 1932 and used for surgical procedures because it was eight to ten times more potent than morphine with a fast onset. It was later discontinued as other and medications were found to be more effective and longer lasting. A street form of desomorphine reemerged in the early 2000s in Russia called crocodile, with the name being related to its chemical name a did, and for the damage that occurs in the skin with intravenous use resembling crocodile leather. Okay, I said it right. Homemade production of crocodile is inexpensive compared to heroin use, but very toxic. The user will mix 5 to 10 coating tablets with paint thinner, gasoline, or lighter fluid, hydrochloric acid, iodine, and red phosphorus. The drug is injected, and since no filtration process has occurred, skin, muscles, muscles, and bone in, in the injected area are immediately damaged, and eventually necrosis of the area occurs. These conditions usually lead to amputation or death. Since desomorphine has a short half-life, crocodile users have to inject often to obtain their high, decreasing their lifespan by one to two years from their initial injection without intervention. The first reported case in the United States was seen in the emergency department of John Hopkins School of Medicine in Baltimore. The patient was a 23-year-old female who complained of pain and non-healing ulcers in the forearms where she had injected crocodile 12 months previously. The patient grew more concerned of the area of injection and initially had purulent drainage, but had become malodorous as the area became necrotic. Due to the use of red phosphorus in the straight form, cases of John osteonecrosis in both maxillary and mandibular jaws have been reported in users of crocodile. The necrotic area leaves exposed alveolar bone with empty dental sockets. Surgical removal of the necr necrotized areas in crocodile users have been gone through withdrawal, has had some cases with low rates of reoccurrence. Woo, I wouldn't want to take that stuff. Medical effects of drug abuse, cardiovascular effects. Studies show illicit drug abuse has an adverse effect on the cardiovascular system. Intravenous drug use can lead to collapsed veins and bacterial infection of the arterial systems of the heart valves. Cocaine in particular causes vasoconstriction in the coronary arteries, increasing blood pressure, atherosclerotic phenomena, thrombus formation, and myocardial infarction. Neurological effects. All addictive drugs target the reward centers in the brain, allowing the user to experience euphoria. Repeated drug abuse will alter the structure of the brain, making it more difficult for the user to reach euphoric levels requiring increased levels of the drug, which increases the dependency. These alterations in the brain can lead to memory lapse, decision-making or attention problems, lack of impulse control, increase in mental health issues and include depression, suicidal thoughts and behavior, anxiety, paranoia, aggression and hallucinations. Users of ad addictive drugs are likely twice as likely to suffer from mood and anxiety disorders than the general population. Chronic abuse of volatile solvents such as Taloon damage the protective sheath around the certain nerve fibers in the brain and peripheral nervous system. This extensive destruction of the nerve fibers is clinically similar to that seen with neurologic diseases such as multiple sclerosis. Gastro gastrointestinal effects. 
Cocaine in particular has been associated with gastrointestinal complications and abdominal pain. Cocaine reduces blood flow to the intestines, which can lead to ulcerations and even severe bowel gangrene. Many drugs of abuse have been known to cause nausea, vomiting, leading to appetite loss, malnutrition, and significant weight loss. Kidney damage. Chronic drug use causes toxicity to several organs, including the kidney. Drug affect the renal function either through the toxic effects of the drug or by the reduction of kidney function. Pain medications, alcohol, antibiotics, and illegal drugs can all cause kidney damage if not properly used. In addition, substance abusers tend not to keep hydrated with water, which negatively impacts the the proper function of kidneys. Chronic use of drugs that increase blood pressure will lead to renal failure. Shared needles or non-sterile injecting techniques increases the user's risk for contracting infections such as viral hepatitis. Liver damage. The liver detoxifies drugs, chemicals, and alcohol that are ingested. Changes in liver function due to drug abuse decrease the metabolism of drugs. When not able to break down them properly, the drug can remain at a toxic level. Chronic ab abuse of heroin and inhalants and steroids may cause significant liver damage. The consumption of alcohol and cocaine together co compound the danger each drug possesses. The liver combines cocaine and alcohol to a form of toxic metabolic called cocaine. Cocaethylene. Cocaethylene intensifies cocaine euphoric effects, potentially increases the risk of sudden death. Musculoskeletal effects. Steroid use during children, childhood and adolescent increases sex hormone levels, which signal the bones to stop growing. This will result in steroid user having stunted growth and able to reach their full height potential. Other drugs such as MDMA, Molly, or methamphetamine may cause severe muscle cramping and overall weakness. Respiratory effects. Drug abuse can lead to a variety of respiratory problems. Inhaling cannabis can lead to the same respiratory effects as smoking cigarettes or cigars. Increased risk for bronchitis, emphysema, and cancer. Smoking crack cocaine can cause lung damage and severe respiratory conditions. Opioid use may cause breathing to slow and block air from entering the lungs. If the user suffers from asthma, opioids will increase breathing complications. Inhalants are compromised of toxic chemicals that damage sensitive lung tissue when inhaled. Prenatal effects. Prenatal drug abuse has been associated with miscarriage, premature birth, low birth weight, increase of behavioral and cognitive problems in the child. Drug use such as heroin during pregnancy can cause a condition in the infant called neonatal abstinence syndrome, in which the infant is born dependent on opioids. An infant born with NAS requires hospitalization to treat symptoms such as seizures, fever, and weight loss or dehydration. The infant is typically treated with opioid replacement, either oral morphine solution or methadone. Emerging studies show sublingual bup Buprenorphine was found to be superior to morphine and methadone. Infants treated with buprenorphine have had a significantly shorter course of treatment and decreased hospital stay. Inhalatant abuse by expectant mother can result in fetal solvent syndrome with abnormally similar to those occurring with FS, FASD. Infections. Infections have been recognized as one of the most serious complications among drug users. There are many reasons why drug users are at a greater risk for infection, such as the following. Unsterile inject injection technique in contaminated drug paraphernalia. Alter alter in alter alternate <laughs> or cutting agents may be deliberately added to street drugs or to enhance their effects, resulting in lower purity of the drug. This will also increase cutaneous abscesses in the drug user. Unsafe sex practices or multiple sex partners. Living conditions such as overcrowded housing, homeless shelters, unsanitary environments, and even living on the street. Malnourishment in conjunction with the toll of the drugs on the body leads to weakened immune system and poor hygiene. The type of infections drug users are at risk for um, are the following. Pulmonary tuberculosis and respiratory tract infections include community-acquired pneumonia, endovascular infective endocarditis, skin and soft tissue, abscesses and cellulitis located at injection site, bone and joint septic arthritis and osteomyelitis and extension of soft tissue infection, sexually transmitted infections, gonorrhea, cancroid, herpes simplex 2, bacterial vaginosis, trichomonosis, candida, candidiasis, human emission immunodeficiency virus, hepatitis B virus, and HCV. Treatment methods. Chronic drug addiction causes changes in the brain involved in reward and motivation, learning and memory, and control over drug. Drug addiction can be treated but is complex. Successful treatment should include the following, detoxification, behavioral therapies, medications, evaluation and treatment, and long-term follow-up. Behavioral therapies. 
These help patients modify their attitudes and behavior towards drugs and the use and encourage healthier life choices. Behavioral therapy sessions can be provided in an outpatient and inpatient setting. The following are examples. Uh, cognitive behavioral therapies help patients recognize, avoid, and cope with situations. Multi Multidimensional family therapy is designed to help improve family functioning and motivational incentives, which use positive reinforcement to encourage abstinence from drugs. Drug withdrawal medications. Medications and devices can help suppress withdrawal symptoms during the detoxification process. In November of 2017, the Food and Drug Administration approved an electronic stimulation device called the NSS2 bridge. The device is placed behind the car and sends electrical pulses to stimulate certain brain nerves to help the opioid withdrawal symptoms. Medications such as methadone can be used to manage withdrawal symptoms, prevent relapse, and treat co-occurring conditions. Methadone, a full opioid agonist, meaning it is an opioid that can reduce withdrawal symptoms and crazy cravings by activating opioid receptors in the brain without producing the euphoric high. Mus misuse of this narcotic medication can increase addiction or result in overdose or death. It is used in long-term maintenance for patients recovering from heroin or opioid addiction. Methadone can be administered 2.5 to 10 mg intravenously, intramuscularly, or subcutaneously eight, every 8 to 12 hours. It can also be administered orally initially, uh, 20 to 30 mg for the initial dose, additionally 5 to 10 mg given every 2 to 4 hours. The goal is to get the patient to a 40 mg a day maintenance level. Buprenorphine, subtex. Uh, a partial opioid agonist, meaning it is an opioid that can activate and block opioid receptors in the brain to reduce and eliminate withdrawal symptoms without producing the euphoric high. It is a Schedule three drug versus methadone, which is a Schedule two drug. It is available for sublingual administration. It is um, administered in two or eight mg tablets taken once or twice daily. Now, Trexome. This medication is not an opioid. It is an opioid antagonist blocking the brains of opioid receptors, preventing the user from reaching the euphoric phase and making the potential for misuse less. Vivitrol is injected once a month or Revia can be taken orally one 50 mg tablet a day. Now, Trexone Revia is also prescribed for patients recovering from alcoholism. It does not require full detoxification to use, usually three to 10 days of no opioid use. Dental care process of care. Patient history. The medical history questionnaire should inquire the substances how uh, used, how patient administered, and the substance quantity and time the last dosage. Identify all current medications. A medical consult with the patient physician and addiction specialist. Conduct with the medical history examination utilizing a motivational interviewing approach to establish a non-judgmental environment. Screening. National Institute on Drug Abuse, NIDA, Quick Screen. NIDA has developed a screening tool for health professionals to assess if a patient is abusing alcohol, tobacco, prescription medications for non-medical purposes, or illegal substances. The NIDA Quick Screen tool incorporates the five A's, ask, advise, assist, assess, assist, arrange. I'm going to say that again. The five A's, ask, advise, assess, assist, arrange. The NIDA website provides an online interactive form to complete on a mobile device or chair side. The NIDA website can be found right online and you can go on your internet and find it. Vital signs. Record information in the patient record. Blood pressure frequently is increased when alcohol and other drugs like stimulants are used. Clinical examination. Um, want to focus on inability to focus on recall simple concepts like phone numbers or addresses. They may exhibit rapid mood swings or display paranoia or disorientation, and they may start to complain about dental pain requesting a prescription for specific pain medications. Extra oral examination, alcohol signs, breath and body odor of alcohol and tobacco, tremors of hands, tongues, and eyelids. The skin may be red, Face color, light yellow, brown, may indicate jaundice. Eyes red and baggy. Evidence of trauma, facial injuries related to falls when intoxicated. Lips, angular colitis related to poor nutrition and parotid gland swelling if they had been vomiting quite a bit. Personal appearance. Uh, does the patient look much older than they are? Lack of interest, wears long sleeves to cover up their needle marks, dramatic weight loss, or emaciated appearance. The head and neck, patients smoking or vaping substances are at a greater risk of cancer. The eyes, they may wear sunglasses to conceal dilated or constricted pupils and eye redness to avoid bright light because of eye sensitivity. 
pupils dilated, amphetamine, LSD, cocaine, or marijuana. If the pupils are constricted, they're taking heroin, morphine, and methadone. Uh, bloodshot eyes are cannabis, THC. Nose, inhaled or snorted substances can damage nasal structures, causing frequent nosebleeds, and patient may constantly be sniffing or wiping their nose. Nasal septum perforation or cocaine snorting. Arms, needle marks may be noted. Heroin use can cause subcutaneous abscesses called popping that leave scars. Behavior, sneezing, itching, tendency to gaze into space, moodiness, drowsiness, yawning, may sleep long hours, appearance of intoxication or lethargic with or without the odor of alcohol, slurred speech and changes in habits, possession of pills, hallucinations, intraoral examination, mucosa, lips and tongue, dry drug induced xerostomia, soft tissue abnormalities, tongue coated, glossitis, glossitis related, related to nutritional deficiencies. Burns and sores on lips from smoting crack or meth. Taste impairment. Gingiva, generalized, poor oral hygiene, heavy biofilm is typical. Calculus deposits may be generalized depending on patient neglect. Moderate to severe gingival inflammation, gingival enlargement, gingival bleeds spontaneously, gingival lesions resulting from the direct application of cocaine, higher incidence of periodontal disease, particularly destructive periodontitis, necrotizing gingivitis, palate, perforation of the palate due to chronic cocaine snorting, Teeth chipped and fractured from falls and injury, stained from tobacco, attrition secondary to, for, uh, to bruxism, especially among cocaine and meth users with increased tooth sensitivity, erosion secondary frequent to frequent vomiting exposure, substances with low pH, uh, oral application of cocaine and meth. Removable or fixed partial dentures, chipped or broken, and may require frequent repairs. Dental caries, increased risk factors, poor diet, poor lack of dental care, accumulation of biofilm, and xerostomia. Diet high in karyogenic substances, generalized tooth decay, especially on smooth and cervical and fewer restorations, suggesting not assessing dental care on a regular basis. Rampant carious lesions due to methamphetamines. Diets are sweet, alcohol, and sugar-sweetened beverages. Tooth loss. Oral pathologies, oral candidiasis uh, can be present with the substance abuse due to immunosuppression. Due to immunosuppression and inadequate nutrition, tissue healing is poor. Is poor. Leukoplakia and hyperkeratinosis can develop. Urethroplakia, oral papilloma, mucosal infections, complaints of burning mouth, xerostomia, TMJ tenderness, difficulty in opening and chewing, in, indirect effects of drugs on the oral health. Substance abuse patients may delay dental and dental hygiene care due to dental anxiety or stigma of drug use. Any available money is used in the purchase of drugs, so health care and teeth are of, li of low priority. Dental care is an emergency basis to alleviate pain and discomfort and to, and to obtain prescription for drugs. The dental hygiene diagnosis. The patient's oral needs could be extensive. The dental hygienist should assess the following diseases. Head neck swelling, TMJ and occlusion, oral cancer and pathology, xerostomia, dental caries, periodontal infections, and nutritional deficiencies. You need to read over the care planning, the implementation, and the evaluation. The documentation. Patient record medical alert box for possible substance abuse alerts dental personnel to use of non-alcoholic mouthwrights. Results of drug and alcohol screening. Any alerts or contraindications for treatment it, that is epinephrine and local anesthetic. Inappropriate behavior during appointments such as aggressive or belligerent behavior. Document early oral signs and symptoms of substance abuse. Oral examination, ulcerations, infections, and xerostomia. Dental examination, dental caries, and unusual sites are more extensive than previously documented. Periodontal examinations, rapid changes in periodontal status. Patient education, relapse of previously good oral hygiene. Psychological reactions and aggressive behavior.